Well, it's Friday, and we love it right here every other Friday because GD Johnson joins us on Off the Press. GD, it's good to have you join us. It's a pleasure to be with you, Mercy and Kofi. Good morning to you. Good, right. good morning to you, GD Johnson. It seems you're, you're already in the um, in the October first spirit. Either that, um, or you are you are. Uh, yeah, do. I uh, go sweep me who perfect the holiday. Okay, okay. So I, I, <laughs> so I see they sweep you, they pay them. So you've joined Wicked's uh, team now. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just catching my cruise. You know, this is just to catch your cruise. Yes, indeed. This yes. Of the yes, yes. You, you have, if you want to complete the Wicked look, you have to go with dark shades, and I think that'll be that'll complete it. <laughs> well, Judy Johnson actually took it out from me. Uh, uh, Kofi joins the conversation right yes, here. Yes. Yes, to have indeed. you on the set. Coffee. Fantastic. Good morning. Yes, indeed. All right, then. So uh, we start off with the Punch newspaper this morning. We have all the papers, but the Punch will be uh, the first for us. And like I mentioned, uh, we'll be sharing the thoughts of GD. Boldly written, APC presidential campaign, Tunubu to pacify Adamu, governors with 2,000 appointments. And who will pacify the electorate? What are they being pacified with? Um... Party disowns leaked letter, denies one man show allegation against candidate. Really? Aggrieved NWC members nominee added to campaign list. And uh, away from that, you find PDP NWC mem members write IU and reject housing allowance. Well, that's not even it. I mean, you have some quarters saying 100 million or thereabout was rejected. And we're saying, have we gotten to a point where people are rejecting money now? It's, it might just be very commendable or this might just be an act. We really don't know. But we're waiting to share the thoughts of GD. Uh, power sector loses 420 billion naira annual revenue. That's what Jens Coase quoted to say. An economist forecasts Naira slide. Inflation as campaign begins. Reps raise the alarm over possible Ebola outbreak, as Uganda has also said, you know, you have uh, about 20 persons who have been infected or thereabout. Federal government makes fresh offer as to insist on Utah's. That is the problem. Tunubu absent, Hatiku orders aside peace parts. Buhari demands non-violent polls. Adeleke wins at Supreme Court, hometown. PDP celebrates. There's a lot going on. And two feared dead in RTEN -E clash. Song Wolu suspends the union. I'm uh, talking about association of uh, uh, road transport employees. Uh, that's what you find there. Three EFCC lawyers, 59 orders mix. S A N list. That's the much we can take on the punch. And we move over to the Nation newspaper with some interesting headlines this morning. And of course, um, no surprises there. <laughs> They're looking at the People's Democratic Party and uh, the situation. Even though I think the the situation in the APC demands more attention. Scandal rocks PDP National Working Committee as members return 122.4 million naira. Now, is that a bigger story than the letter um, written by uh, Adamu uh, <laughs> Abdullahi to the party's presidential candidate? You tell me. But anyway, it says Scandal rocks PDP National Working Committee as members return 122.4 million naira. Arapaja Obi Adugun. Ada Gunodo, uh, Efa Ato, reject strange rent stipends, uh, outrage over curious payments, party cash, party cash meant for chieftain's housing allowance. Um, tucked in the bottom left corner is a picture of Abdullah Damu, chairman of the APC, uh, with a headline, No Rift Over APC com Campaign Council, says spokesman, party chair, candidate on same page. But we let, read that letter. You know, we read that letter and it seemed well written. It seemed written. Uh, Damo Abdullah is a very intelligent man, very intelligent, good with his words. And he put up a letter that, you know, anyone should study who wants to speak, you know, better English should study. Really well written. You know, I read some of his statements from yesteryears and uh, he seems to be very, very well educated and has a good grasp of the English language. So, um, what would the party say to that? 62 lawyers are now SANs, Shitu, Oyedepo, Tahiru on list. 
Developing countries face currency depreciation, marking the autumn inaugurate 110 kilometer road. Uh, Supreme Court upholds Adelike's nomination, uh, 2023, 2023 that is. Buhari Abdul Salami worried over spread of fake news. Fake news. Party's presidential candidate signed peace. Packed, um, like the nation put it, there was one auspicious absentee. Mm. ADC rules out of place, out of ADC rules out peace deal with presidential candidate Kachiku. Uh, right, um, and we have, uh, I think those are the ones on the front page for now. We'll leave it at that. Oh, before I forget, Lawan surrenders to court ruling and Lagos suspends RTA EAN Exco's. So, so he have, he's given in to China being uh, the senatorial candidate. You sound an American, Machina. <laughs> well, uh, the Daily Sun uh, talks about uh, the presidential candidate signing the peace accord. I mean, Buhari's caution, presidential candidate signed a uh, peace accord. Shatima stands in for Tunubu, a place... Nigeria above regional and sectional interests. Uh, that's what the president is urging, um, you know, those who are vying for the office of the president. Place Nigeria above regional, sectional interests, Buhari is quoted. 2023, I will remove structures retarding Nigeria's progress, or B, that's Peter B. How will be the question that those who are interested should be asking? APC, withdrawal of letter to Tunubu Tears National Working Committee apart. Members want Buhari, presidential candidate, served. Supreme Court affirms Oshun governor-elect valid uh, PDP candidates. I mean, Adelie has been going through a lot of, you know, uh, trials right there. The PDP crisis takes new twists as uh, four National Working Committee members refund 122.4 million naira purportedly given to them by IU. INEC threatens party with fresh sanctions over hate speech and campaign funding. And you also have another one, NECO releases 2022 uh, SSC internal result records 70% uh, pass in maths and English. And you have, uh, that's it this morning, just before moving away, tension as soldiers invade Anambra community and kill one, injure four others. That's it on the Daily Sun. Very quickly, the Daily uh, Trust, uh, don't fight dirty, Buhari tells Tidu Atiku will be others. We're at critical stage. Jonathan, fake news, misinformation to uh, threat to poll out to Salami. Yeah, good to see him back and doing what he knows how to do best. Uh, we'll monitor candidates, parties, conduct, and spending, INEC. Uh, do they really mean that, or is this just a all back and no bite? Governors reject FG's plan to privatize five power plants. India tops importation of Nigerian goods in Q2. Father remanded for attempting to sell daughter for 20 million naira in Benue. Yobe North, Lawrence bow signals end of 24-year journey in National Assembly. It's not a bad time to take a bow and go and take a rest. IU bribed us with uh, millions, six PDP and WC members allege uh, Nigeria Air. Questions, doubts as FG unveils Ethiopian Airlines as core investor and we see pictures of the presidential candidates well some of the presidential candidates for the signing of that national peace accord um of course uh Jilly johnson we come over to you this uh, signing of the national peace accord does it mean anything uh, we've been having these signings before in fact the one we did in river state in 2015 i think so they cut a cake but that was one of the worst uh years on record as far as Nigerian elections are concerned, in River City, a lot of bloodshed. That's the first question I have for you regarding this. Second question, Julie Johnson. Uh, the auspicious absentee, of course, I didn't see Bika Chiku, um, Dumebi Kachiku there. Maybe there are one or two other candidates missing, but the auspicious one, or the, the, cons the conspicuous one, rather, uh, was uh, uh, the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, who was represented by his running mate. And uh, there's talk, of course, uh, online that... Uh, 
Um, Tinubu is place order for holder for Shetima. Um, Shetima will be the main man in that t on that ticket. So, what are your thoughts on this? Over to you, sir. Well, first, um, why do the peace committee always wait for the electoral side to show their face? There have been a lot of issues that has affected Nigeria and the peace and tranquility of Nigeria. We have the split of kidnapping left, right, and center. We have various abduction. I think the, the scope of the work of the Peace Committee should not be limited only to the signing of peace accord during, during the electoral cycle. It should get involved in, in a lot of a lot of issues in promoting peace across the length and breadth of Nigeria. As far as I'm concerned, it's just for the optics. I might be wrong. It's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. Um, um, so it's just for the optics because I don't see I don't see any significance. Um, what's the what's the authority or what's the what's the legitimacy of this of this um, peace 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 committee headed by uh, the former military uh, head of state that bestowed this present democratic experiment on us? So some of the due diligence which administration need to have done with respect to providing structural institution to strengthen this democracy were not done. It was quickly done and then we have found ourselves where we have found ourselves. That's why you see the presidential candidate of the of the of the Labour Party saying that it's going to restructure things that have retarded um, the growth of Nigeria. And um Mercy asks pointedly how which is really the question we should be asking. Not what you want to do now. How do you want to do what you want to do? Because you have listened to a lot of what, 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 what from politicians. It's just pure rhetoric. With respect to the absence, mm. Kofi, you actually use the appropriate word. Um, it's auspicious. Uh, it's, it's auspicious because if you look at it, it has become a pattern. Um, when the Nigerian Bar Association hosted its annual um, conference in Lagos, um, the presidential Lagos the venue is just some few kilometers, some few kilometers away from the residence of the APC presidential candidate. It was not, it was not there. When um, now we have the sign of the peace accord, it was also not there. These are significant events, significant events that you expect the presidential candidate to be present. If indeed it's like somebody not coming for a job interview and he's sending someone else to go and do the job interview. And from some of the things we have even heard, that the presidential candidate of APC has told us allegedly that he does, he's not is not applying to be the the head of a media organization. So why should he do interview? I think the media owes us the responsibility as a Nigerian to do such light to this issue. Beyond his absence, what is responsible? What I have expected to be. And what I'm expecting from today moving forward is what is responsible for his absence in all of this meeting. Where is he? What is really going on? I wish we have the, the English tabloid in Nigeria now. We have that 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 era, and I wish we had the era of of, of guerrilla journalism that we had under Abacha's administration. That true spotlight is unfortunate that uh, magazine. I uh, suffered a near death. These are areas which magazines, when you talk about Tempo, Tell, um, Newswatch, these are areas in which they explore in, in, in those days. And these are opportunities for, 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 for the online media platforms, those that have online media platforms that have come to replace, provide the services being offered by magazine in those days to, to explore what is the reason behind the continuous absence of the APC presidential candidate in some certain flagship event towards 2023 election. We need answers. That's what that's the beauty of democracy. Democracy is government of the people and the media represent the people. The people deserves the right to know about everything that is going on with whoever has offered himself to serve them. Is they are not offering themselves to serve themselves, they are offering to serve Nigeria. So the other is the placeholder, the placeholder. That's that's just uh, simplifying the issue. It's belittling the issue. We should go deeper and know the reason, the reason why uh, the presidential candidate of the APC yeah, has you, not attended 
you left you left out the uh, LCCI event as well, the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry event, where he asked for a postponement of his appearance till October, um, whilst the likes of um, Atiku and uh, Obi uh, appear in September. So, I don't know. Well, we we hear yeah, like pointed out, we, we cannot we cannot afford to allow any presidential candidate to play hide and seek. It is the destiny of you and I, the destiny of millions of Nigerians that is at stake. Now, if, if my my people used to this popular saying that the way Saturday will look like, you look at it, you get to know about it from Friday. Now, the money tells you about how the day is going to look like. Now, if in the course of seeking for the office, you are playing hide and seek, the the, the, the the simplest conclusion, the logical conclusion you can come up with is that if you eventually secure the mandate of the people, you play hide and seek with 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 governance. That's that's those are the kind of question. Is this the pattern you are going to use to run the country if you are elected the president? These are the kind of questions I expect journalists when they have that opportunity to throw their microphone in front of the presidential candidate. Of all political parties, specifically the APC presidential candidate, question they need to ask them. And we need to ask them tough questions. It's about it's about it's about what will happen to Nigeria in the next four years. You are lamenting about what happened in the last eight years. Now, lamentation should stop, questioning should start, and spotlight should be thrown to the activities. Well, um, let's move away from that. Uh, take a look at the nation. Scandal rocks the PDP uh, National Working Committee as members return 122.4 million naira. Uh, that's what the nation is reporting, of course. Uh, every other time, well, it feels like you know the report the opposite. We are getting to know the storm in the teacup in PDP. The storm in the teacup in PDP is being. It's, it's, it's coming into the open hand. I, I, I don't know whether it's this program, but pro okay, so it's a program I attended earlier this, this week, where I said that, look, the party offices in Nigeria, at, particularly at the national level, the national chairman is so powerful. He's so powerful that he sits on billions of naira that are not, audit, that are not, that are not audited, to my knowledge, appropriately by agencies of government, because if you look at the nomination fees they collected, the nomination fees they collected across the length and breadth of Nigeria for people seeking political offices, you will be shocked at the amount of money they have and the relevance of that office, the, the visibility of, of, of that office. How often do you see Adam Toshimala in the news after he left the national chairman? of APC. How often have you seen the governor of UB State, the former chairman of the Kiatika Committee and Special Convention Committee that was that superintended over APC for more than two years, my, my Malaboni, how often do you see him in the news compared to when he was he was the Kiatika chairman of, of, of the APC? So so we we are we have seen that the power that is, and if you situate that with what is happening in, in APC, it's uh, where some NYC members, National Working Committee members, uh, are, are insisting that the letter that is written, the leaked letter that is written, that has not been served to the presidential candidate of the APC, should be served to the presidential candidate of the APC, as well as the president of Federal Republic of Nigeria, who happens to be the national leader of the party presently. So you have storm in the tick cup in PDP. You have peace in the graveyard. The peace in the graveyard of the APC uh, that uh, seems to be some palpable silence. That silence has been broken now with this leaked letter that shows that, well, um, that I like that the presidential candidate of their party is running a one-man show. Two, that we also see in the in, in, in the report where the I think it was a Punch newspaper that reported that the presidential candidate of the APC promised to pacify um, the 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 NY the National Working Committee members and governors in 2000, 2000, 
appointment. You see, Messi, what is really good is that the catalyst that have started. The, the sword that has been in the sheet and the knives that have been inside the pocket, they have been they will be brought out now as we move towards 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 the main towards the main election. Just grab your popcorn, grab your ice cream, take a ringside position. I, I will need eat. I will need space Don't to be created and, uh. and, and, <laughs> and, and enjoy and enjoy the drama because this is just the beginning of the drama. You had let me let me be an American. You ain't seen nothing yet. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning of of, of the drama. Gide, this, Gide, this I, I, I will need space to be. I mean, just, you know, some sort of space so I can come with my popcorn and ice cream. That's on a lighter note, but I'm sure that Kofi's on standby. You know, with the next question. Have we have we talked about the PDP situation yet? Yes, we have. Uh, yes, okay. So uh, we have talked about. Yeah, it. well, you see, Kofi, let me quickly add something to that. How can an individual? have the power to allocate one allegedly 122 million to other members of the national working committee the body that is meant to superintend on on the running on the day-to-day -day running of the party now is not dispensing the chairman on his own is not dispensing money to core members deputy national chairman from the south and other members, other members of the National Working Committee, the 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 the, the employed members, quote unquote, the members that are that are entitled to so so you see the the the, the resources. That's why some of them don't want to resign. You know, you took the intervention of the president to make a uh, Malai my Buni to conduct the APC APC convention to elect that elected Adamu as the national. As not chairman, and then you could see all the pressure that have been exerted on are you to resign? He has not resigned. But There's but too much money there. Just a quick one now. I, I mean, we're very concerned. Also, it's surprising that uh, you know you have members of uh, the party rejecting money, returning money. I mean, since when did these things start happening? Uh, could this just be an act, or where are we again? Because they will be consumed. They will be consumed whether you like it or not. Are you will have to leave? You could see the voter face that have been put put up by Wiki, Autumn, um, Market Day, and the rest of PDP had their own inauguration. Five out of the 13 governors didn't attend. That's close to about that's about 45%. 45%. Can a bird fly with half of its half with one of its wing? No. That's it's a it's a challenge. So you see that this is these members that returned the money. When they collected the money initially, did they tell you and I? What we told? It's because they've seen the undercurrent of what is coming. In order for them not to be consumed. That's why they they have um they are, they, are, they are come out with Nigerians. How many Nigerians? Only very few Nigerians return money. When they collected the money, they didn't tell you and I. Now they are not telling us. They are now running to the press to say that we are returning the money. Why did they collect the money in the first instance? That's the question we need to ask. All right, let's go over to the punch. An interesting story. Uh, FG makes fresh offer. Asu insists on Utah. Now, I, I want to look at this also in the light of... Um, a theory in my head that um, it seems like the, the federal government is, is working against itself. Um, you have a minister of labor and productivity and employment who has been leading the uh, negotiations with ASU. And then the president saying, you know, during the meeting they had, you know, at ASU Villa with stakeholders in the education sector saying, okay, uh, 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 minister of education, Adam Adam, will lead the negotiations. And then the Minister of Labor and Employment comes out to tell the entire country that the president gave Adamo Adamu two weeks. Adamo Adamu now addresses the press at Asura Villa, you know, at the presidential, um, at the uh, meet the press event by the presidential communications team and says, oh, it's not true. He actually says it's a lie. He did, the president never told him it was two weeks. So the president told him to sort the issue out in the nearest possible time. Uh, then 
it, it comes out to say, oh, that Adamu is the one who raised his hand in the meeting and said he needs two weeks. Then Adamu invites Asu, sorry, the Nimi Briggs committee, sits down with them and with some stakeholders and then decides to form a 14-man committee to, to look into the recommendations of the Nimi Briggs committee, uh, which negotiated with Asu, chaired by him on 15th September. Five days later, the federal government takes Asu to court. These things don't match. And whilst they're in court, the ministry is still negotiating and we hear FG makes fresh offer to Asu. Uh, to me, it seems like there's some sort of, um, uh, there are divergent interests in all of this. I, that's what I, I, I think. You know, in fact, the president of uh, the Senate Speaker, uh, Femi Bajabi Amila, right honorable, met with Asu just when the court was about to sit and he said he was going to meet the president when he comes back. Is Mr. President really on top of the situation? Because if he's on top of the situation, why do we have the ministry seems to be doing one thing and the, uh, of education and then the, the Minister of Labor Employment doing another thing, which is taking the union to court? These things do not match. Sir? Since the beginning of this crisis, um, how have you seen the relationship between the Minister of Labor and Productivity, or how have you interpreted the relationship between the Minister of Labor and Productivity and the Minister of Education? I've had cause to attend two meetings when I was Deputy Provost of Nigerian of Journalism, Jam Policy Meeting, um, where the Minister was present. Um, as far back as 2016, I've said it to, that this this character does not deserve to be a minister of education in Nigeria. There is there is there is a seeming arrogance about. I might be wrong in terms of my opinion. You, you, you're, you're not far from arrogance. the generally held view. Um, <laughs> you're not far from the yeah. so I might be wrong. I might be wrong with that. Um, this there is there is this overwhelming arrogance about the minister of education with respect to his disposition to issues and the rest of it. And that's why you have seen these various policies some as well. And sometimes that he has contradicted what the, the the president the president said. And you see different types of moves, um, 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 countervailing moves, um, moves that are nullifying each other being taken by. There's no coherent direction with respect to it. And I think that it calls for leadership leadership from the head of, 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 of the government who happens to be the president. And now when people talk about the FG, you have seen the intervention of um, the Speaker of House of Bread. You have not seen the intervention of the Senate. The Senate has not said, if it's about oil subsidies, it's about raising supplementary budget to deal with some other issues, quickly government will come up with policies on how to raise supplementary budget, and the budget will be quickly passed by the National Assembly. Now you have an issue affecting the lives of our children, the future of our nation, because education is the future of any nation. The youths who are presently, as presently constituted, majority of them are in the universities and tertiary institutions, they are out of school. Then you are mortgaging the future leaders of this nation. So you are going to have big leaders being trained through a, a default system that is, that, that, that is perpetrated as a result of arrogance, in fighting between ministers and countervailing policies from, from, from the same government, government speaking with one voice. So how, how do you take, think that ASU will take federal government to be serious? We attended the meeting, we come out of the meeting, we agree, oh, we agree in the meeting, then we, we came out in the open, we are saying something contrary to what we are we agreed on. So that's why you have seen that ASU has insisted on not calling off on calling off the strike. There's no amount, there's no way you go to court to, you see the best way to resolve industrial problem, industrial crisis, is for you to go to negotiation and, uh, and, 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 and resolution, other than go to court, the court to, <coughs> the court, now when the court rule, what, what has the court rule? What effect has he had on us? That's one, two, when the, government directed businesses to open the university and the same government said okay we are not directing them to open the university you see this policy flip flop will not will not will not help and um if indeed we are we are a democratic society and a 
better organized society, I think the Minister of Legal and Productivity and the Minister of Education would Jude, have resigned. Okay, yes, Jude Johnson, quickly, um, because we're being told that we have little time to be here. But on the nation, uh, there's also a headline that's really interesting, especially the f uh, when you talk about Africa, knowing that Nigeria is a giant of Africa. I don't know if we're still, you know, uh, maintaining that, uh, you know, status. Now, developing countries facing currency depreciation. Uh, my question is, why Africa? Why, why is it that the African uh, currencies are struggling? Well, well it's, 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 you see, the impact of COVID-19 lockdown, the consequences of it, we still see it in, for the next... But it was a global next, issue. No, 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 but this one, coming. the narrative of, look, the dollar is struggling, the pound sterling is struggling, the euro is struggling. I think the the current, uh, the Chinese yen is struggling. The only currency that seems to be a bit stable, and it's because of the control that Russia has over over supply of energy to Europe is 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 is, is the Russian rubles that have refused to 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 be rubbled through the war that is going on between Russia and Europe. And now it, that will even be affected with 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 the bombing of or uh, with the sabotage of the Nord Stream the Nord Stream pipeline that supply gas from 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 Russia to to to, to European countries by passing by passing, going through the sea, by passing Poland, Ukraine, and, and the rest of it. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's not only, but you always see the narrative of IMF, of World Bank, talking about issues happening in Africa. The world is facing global economic crisis. The world is facing crisis, food crisis. The world is facing crisis in global chain supply. So, it is not peculiar to Africa alone. However, it affects African more because in this other part of the world, government comes up with intervention policy. But in Nigeria, in Africa, you are left on your own, on your own alone. And just like um, uh, the Senate president will be on his own with the ruling in UB by the Federal High Court in UB that Machina is the is the is the authentic APC a APC. Uh, candidate in 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 you will not um, so that's the way federal government and the government in nigeria leaves all of us all alone all right uh Jilly johnson it's interesting to have had you on the program this morning and of course uh, we look forward to having you next time uh on off the press thank you so much and uh, uh um, thank you very much happy independence happy, happy independence, independence to you yes indeed Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for your time and have a fantastic holiday. We'll return after the short break. Of course, look at uh, our first major conversation. We're talking about very important issues, the aviation sector and the energy crisis facing it. Stay with us till the breakfast on Plus TV Africa.